Good evening, this is the Oscar expert here with Brother Bro, and it is time for final Oscar predictions. And this video is also sponsored by Odds Checker. With Odds Checker, you get to compare the odds of all the betting websites. So if you're really adamant about predicting, say, Kristen Stewart, you're gonna wanna make sure you're getting the bang for your buck. So you get to look at Odds Checker, you see the odds, and you see which betting website will give you the most money. It's a win-win for you, it's a win-win for your wallet, and you'll be running to the bank with bags of money. You can pay off your mortgage, pay off your car payments. No one's coming to repossess your house anymore. And throughout the video, we'll be linking some articles in this top corner that you can check them out. And we've also got a link in the description if you wanna just check out the website, browse the odds for yourself. But most importantly, they're paying us money, so give them a round of applause. All right, now let's predict best picture. My goodness, we actually have a race. Here, yeah, it was me. it was always for me like if Coda wins PGA, then you know, because if Power of the Dog won PGA, I would have been like, yeah, that it's kind of done. But Coda after SAG made me think that could win PGA. It now has won PGA. We did film a reaction to it, and here it is as a treat for you. Let's see what the fuck are you doing? You can't be serious. You can't be fucking serious. You're not even kidding. You are not kidding. Is it King Richard? Ah! What the fuck? What are you doing? What is? What are you talking about? <laughs> you can't Whoa! be fucking serious. Whoa! Whoa! Whoa, Nelly! Whoa, Nelly! You're telling Bro. me it's not Power of the Dog. Bro, it's not Power of the Dog. Is it Coda? It's Coda. Ha ha ha! Oh! Oh! I know! Oh! I know! Oh! I know! Wow. Oh, wow. Oh. We're seeing that it could win every one of its nominations and walk away with a nice picture screenplay supporting package. It's clear to me that Coda's surge happened like after the Oscar nominations. So, you know, you do wonder like if they reheld voting, could Coda have done better? Could it have gotten that editing nomination or a director nomination? Or would Marley Matlin be in contention? I don't know. I, it's really hard to say, but it's clear that it's had this last minute push that could help it defy the odds. And if it did win, it would defy a lot, a lot of odds. Now, let me tell you what some of those odds are because I think this is very important to discuss. There are a lot of stats that Best Picture winners in the, this era often get. SAG nominations. Doesn't have to necessarily be ensemble, but you gotta be nominated for some SAG awards. Since the DGA has been around, every Best Picture winner has had a DGA nomination. Aside from Birdman, every Best Picture winner in like the past insane amount of years has had an editing nomination and we can understand how Birdman's kind of an exception to that. Every Best Picture winner since The Departed has had a fall festival run. Having five or more nominations has been the case for like nearly ever since you can maybe go back to the beginning of the Oscars and find some examples. Also having a BAFTA nomination for Best Film and having Golden Globe nominations in both screenplay and director that has been the case since Crash. Even in close races looking at the very predictive stats does seem to work. Parasite checked all the boxes, even though it didn't win a lot of the major awards for Best Picture, it did have all those things. It had SAG love, whereas 1917 did not have the Fall Festival premiere and it didn't have any SAG nominations. You look at the year with Spotlight, where that was kind of a crazy race. Spotlight checked all the boxes and it was up against The Big Short and The Revenant, which did not have the Fall Festival thing going on. So I do think these matter to look at and Coda breaks a lot of these. And this was part of my rationale when I tr when I predicted Parasite to win. I can't go against it. I have to stick with Power of the Dog. Maybe we have to throw stats out the window because the love for Coda just transcends it all. I mean, the, I think the argument for Coda is that it's already proven to be a stat breaker. Like, when has a film won PGA without getting a DGA nomination? I do think that we can kind of compare Coda to Little Miss Sunshine. That movie won supporting actor and screenplay at the Oscars, got a measly four nominations, did not include director and editing, but it also won SAG Ensemble, and it won WGA and PGA. It's also, you know, a very crowd-pleasing movie. They both, I think, have eight on IMDb. That movie did not win Best Picture. So maybe Coda's fate will be very similar to Little Miss Sunshine. However, you had The Departed win, which was also, you know, a movie that was, you know, pleasing the crowd in a way. Power of the Dog, if there's one stat that that will break if it wins Best Picture, it's the, the, gonna be the first Best Picture winner since, the, I think, the 60s to have less than a seven on IMDb. And Coda has an eight, so there is a gap there. But also, 
Power of the Dog has 12 Oscar nominations. If the acting branch nominates Jesse Plemons, how, what does that say about how much they love Power of the Dog? I think it says they love it quite a bit. Now, we have seen films nominated for a fuckboat of Oscars even more than people were predicting, and then lose at the last minute to The Challenger. 1917 overperformed, it got a screenplay nomination. The Revenant got more nominations than it was supposed to. 12. Roma overperformed with its two acting nominations on top of everything else. And that lost to Green Book, which didn't even get a director nomination. Also, La La Land. La La Land had 14 fucking nominations. They could have nominated that for like any more Oscars. There's definitely power to to something feeling shiny and new. And even though Coda's been around like the longest, it still feels shinier and newer. It feels like new. an actual alternative to Power of the Dog for those who maybe just aren't the biggest fans, or maybe they think Power of the Dog's worthy of giving director or maybe cinematography, but not best picture because it didn't give them that great feeling. And I think Coda is really giving people a great feeling. And you really can't deny that these are like kind of polar opposite films in a sense. Like Power of the Dog is this technically masterful film. Coda is really not ambitious in terms of its cinematography. It's really all about the performances. It's also kind of like a cheesy movie, but it just really works in that it's kind of impossible to resist. If there's a movie that can win with so few nominations, like maybe it's Coda because why would you give it director or editing or any technical nominations? So what do you think? What are you going to predict here? Oh, man, I don't know. I do feel like Coda has that passion. It has that passion that just gets that film like right into there. And I don't know if Power of the Dog feels a little bit more like Aroma to me. It's always kind of felt like a little bit of Aroma. And Roma, I, I'm certain, has checked all those stats. It didn't get an editing nomination, though. Yeah. Power of the Dog has every is the only movie with every single stat this year. Every single stat. I got yeah. all the nominations are supposed to get everywhere, pretty yep. much. Can people get enough of seeing the cast of Coda go up on stage and accept awards? Like, I don't know. That's the thing, is like, once Coda got up there for the SAG Award, it was like... We like the CODA team. We HCA like seeing too. the CODA team H go up there. Yeah. And that's kind of what you're voting for in a way, is like the team going up there. I mean, I don't know how much that's really factored in, but even BAFTA's voted for it in screenplay, despite it not being there for film. Like, overpower the dog. I don't know. I think that's pretty fucking powerful that it won screenplay at the BAFTA. Holy shit. I think I'm going to go with CODA. I think I'm going to say that CODA wins, because I just feel like I can see it. <clears throat> Fellas, it is the next day. Things have changed. Well, things haven't changed, but you know, you've had a change of heart. You, you, I've changed. You emerged this morning and you started blab blabbering about how, in fact, Power of the Dog is no longer the f best picture winner. Well, let me state my reasons here for this change of heart, <laughs> for a spiritual change. I was transformed last night around well, 3.30. Did you have a dream? Did you around 3.30 or 4 a.m. I was like... Well, you were awake. You weren't. You didn't like wake up in the middle of the night. You just yeah. stay up. I was thinking about when I tried to predict Roma for best picture. I'm thinking about the period in which I tried to stick to 1917, and I feel the same exact thing about trying to stick to Power of the Dog. The reason I'm using for Power of the Dog is like, oh, like, but... Still, right? And I feel like that <laughs> never works. Like, when has that worked? Oh, but still, come on. When the winds blow in a different direction, when the tide turns, I feel like the Oscars generally go in that direction. In situations like with Green Book, or with The King's Speech, or Birdman, which tide turned at PGA, the Oscars just followed up with that energy. And mind you, a lot of these are for films that were over-nominated, that were nominated for over 10 awards, that were supposed to win director, like La La Land, first movie with 14 nominations not to win Best Picture. I mean, that was a fucking stat breaker that people didn't see coming. You know, you look at nominations morning and you think you see the clear front runner, and then suddenly if the tide is turning with a SAG award or a PGA award, I think more often than not, those movies have been taken down by a film that comes up and says, well, I can still win screenplay, even though I can't win director. And then they get smashed at the final awards ceremony. And a lot of those movies, you know, what do they have in common? It's perhaps that they have a lot of passion, a lot of heart, and a they lot of voters like want They make people feel good to, to vote for it. That's yeah. what I think. And I look at Power of the Dog's IMDb score, and I say it's really low. Like, <laughs> it's actually the lowest out of any Best Picture nominee. It's a movie that you appreciate more than you love. And a lot of times, if there's a race between two films like that, like 1917 or The Revenant, very easy to appreciate. They kind of go towards the movie that they're feeling more, and Coda's definitely that movie. Yeah, it, just, it feels nicer to vote for Coda, especially like right fucking now, as it's winning PGA, as it just won SAG. Like that's when the voting is happening. Yeah, if voting happened a couple weeks ago, like we might have had a different result. If voting happened, yeah, you know, in the future, we could have had a different result. But 
right now when voting's happening, there is a, a CODA thing going on. Also, I can't get out of my head that like, you know the CODA music in the trailer with the xylophone? Like, wee, wee, wee. Something tells me that at the end of Oscar night, that is going to be really resonating throughout the Adobe theater. And that like, when you turn on Good Morning America the next day, like they're gonna be playing that and they're gonna be like, CODA wins the best picture Oscar. In, in true underdog fashion, yeah. with not only like the nominations and the films it was up against, but the fact that people, these people just never expected to be at the Oscars in general, let alone winning best picture. And the Oscars have done that twice recently. They gave it to Moonlight, they gave it to Parasite. They might feel rewarded for giving it to the movie that they perceive as being like the little underdog that could. And CODA's is positioned in that way right now. It also makes you feel good to vote for because of the representation. Like that's kind of undeniable and it's not really a bad thing. Also, when I like imagine the best picture award being announced, I imagine that it's gonna be some woman on stage and she's gonna be like, Coda! I'm like really excited about it. It's harder for me to imagine like this scenario where the power of the dog is on the envelope and it's like the power of the dog. It's like, it's not as compelling to me. Like I see one happening more than the other. The power of the dog winning just feels like kind of like a leathery choice at this point. And that's not its fault. We've seen this happen where you're just like riding high and really riding high then suddenly like the underdog, you know, just smacks you down and then all you can do is decline. All you can do is just go down. And yeah, when does a movie come back up? I mean, you could say Spotlight, sure, that had out front in the beginning, but that had a long time where it like dipped down and started like, you know, hunting beneath the trenches because The Revenant was out front for a while after Spotlight's little critic's choice dance. Like to illustrate the kind of time that Coda is having right now, it wasn't nominated for best film at the BAFTAs and yet it beat Power of the Dog for best screenplay at the BAFTAs. Like think about that. They th th This is a film that was like, you know, kind of in the middle and then right up here. So much so that it beats Power of the Dog to win screenplay at the BAFTAs. It looks like this. Power of the Dog is like this and then like Coda rises goes like this and then Power of the Dogs like this, and then maybe like two weeks from now, we go back to an intersection over here, and then Coda is not doing so well, but right now we're kind of, the, uh, it just goes boop, and it has a little bit of like iceberg tip over Power of the Dog. Yes, this is going against like every, you know, significant stat, but perhaps the most significant of all is not is not the stats. Again, it's just like the feeling I had predicting Roma, like, oh, they'll do it, right? Like, they'll go back to that, right? And it doesn't usually happen like that, so. I have to go with Coda now. What, what if you're wrong? What will you say? What will you say for yourself? If you're I wrong? have to make an apology video. <laughs> There's no other way to say it. Maybe I'm just getting way ahead of myself. Maybe this is just a whole fantasy. This is a fever dream that everybody's going through the PGA and SAGs experience. And it's actually nothing. But it doesn't, I don't know. There's a good stat in Coda's favor, and it's that winning SAG and PGA results in a best picture win. Like almost all the time. And there have only been two movies that didn't win Best Picture with it. One of them was Little Miss Sunshine, the other was Apollo 11. Yeah, but how often does it happen? It's actually happened like, like 10 times. I think people are really feeling that underdog tale with CODA. I certainly can't get enough of like the CODA team getting up and accepting awards and being like, oh my God, I don't even know why we're here or how we got here, but this is awesome. We're a family, we're the CODA family. They do this thing, which is like love and sign language. <laughs> it's cool, it's cool. And I like CODA a lot and I'm, I'm happy with it too, I don't know. And if you reference odds checker, you're gonna see the betting odds have really narrowed for Power of the Dog versus Coda, to the point where I was like, I wish I got on Coda sooner. I really wish I placed a bet before PGA because those odds were really nice and yeah. now they're kind of slim. The odds make it look like it's almost 60-40 Power of the Dog. Yep. And I feel like that could, that's maybe yep. fair. All right, next category, best director, Jane Campion. Any questions? Nope, that is one of the most locked in categories and the betting websites would absolutely agree with you there. It's clear that Jane Campion's winning no matter what, next. Even if Power of the Dog lost all of his other awards, it would still get director. Yep. Best actress, how can we not go with Chastain here? How can we not? I know some people are still denying it. My goodness, you people are persistent. But I mean, I'll definitely give you credit if someone else wins, but I don't even fucking know who it would be at this point. Some people are speculating Kristen Stewart still. I don't know about that. I mean, it's pretty clear that people rejected Spencer overall as a film. Yeah, the thing is with Kristen Stewart or even Penelope Cruz, it's like, I can see people being passionate about those performances and still voting for them. But again, like they don't have SAG nominations. 
wins. Not even a SAG nomination. And that's a big deal, and I can't go against that. I don't think Olivia Coleman's gonna win for The Lost Daughter. That seems dead. I mean, the fact that Chastain won SAG, followed up with Critics' Choice, the fact that that movie's winning makeup and it could get that nice package of actress and makeup, like, it's all making sense for Chastain. Also, it's her third nomination. She's very well respected in Hollywood. She's and overdue. She gave, I mean, she almost won for Zero Dark Thirty. Yeah, and she gave the most baity, transformative performance where she sings and cries and, like, goes nuts. And people were like, oh, maybe it's Nicole Kidman's time? Like, no, no, it's that. And people were like, fuck, no, it's not. It's not her time to win a second Oscar. Like, I think there's, like, for no that, way Nicole Kidman wins anymore. No. It's so hard to make the case for anyone else, and that's when I say... Nearly a lock, nearly a lock. Best actor, Will Smith. Cumberbatch didn't even challenge him at the BAFTAs. I think it's done. I think that race is done. I don't think there's been an acting race, as far as I can remember, where somebody swept all the way and then lost the Oscar. Like, when? I when just really think happen? Benedict would have needed the BAFTA. As Absolutely. many people have said. I, I agree with that. Yeah, no, Will Smith was poised to win very early on. I think like in September, everyone had him out front and here he is making it just abundantly clear that he's going to take the Oscar. It's not a Chadwick Boseman Hopkins scenario. No. Supporting actress, easy, DeBose, nothing to say about that. Yeah, like Will Smith, she just completely cleanly swept through and the runner up is probably like Kirsten Dunst and I just don't think that's very no. strong. Supporting actor at this point, I think it's a clean fucking lock. I'm gonna say Locke for that one. I mean, oh, this is easy to me. my god, yeah. I mean, Coda has to win one award. It has to win at least this award. People love seeing Coda on the stage. They're gonna at least put Troy Cotter on the stage for his incredible performance in Coda, which I'm really, really happy with. I don't think Cody Smith McPhee is going to somehow come back. I think no. he had his run. And, you know, maybe he'll just have to be invited back another time to win an award. It feels like we're light years away from the Cody Smith McPhee won the Golden Globe Award days. Yeah. Like, Troy Kotzer has come in stomping. He's just came in stomping, and there's no way he's going to lose, I think, at this point. We kind of just said all the acting categories are nearly locked in. They seem pretty easy. I will be shocked. Remember I said after the SAGs, I was like, I don't care what happens anywhere else. I think I'm going to predict these four. The Critics' Choice and the Baptist just showed everybody, like, we're really comfortable with this four. I mean, yeah. they did the same fucking thing. Even the, the Critics' Choice didn't even go with a different actress. The Baptist didn't go with a different actor. <coughs> <coughs> duh, duh, duh. I don't even know who would I say is the least likely to win the award. Maybe I would still say Chastain has the lowest odds if I had to say that about anybody. Yeah, because that race has been the most wobbly, but it feels like it got so clear at the end. All right, the screenplay categories. These are fun. Yep. Let's start with Adapted. Coda wins BAFTA over Power of the Dog. And if, you know, we say, oh, maybe they just thought Jane Campion's winning director. We all know this, it's so well established. Let's go with something else here. This is what they did last year too, with Chloe Zhao losing this award to the father. WGA, Power of the Dog was ineligible. So it looked like it was always gonna to go to Coda, but with a SAG win and a PGA win, we have to say that even if Power of the Dog was there, it still would have lost WGA. Let's be, Honest and real about that. Oh yeah, absolutely. Coda has BAFTA and WGA. That's a really, really good combination. I think a lot of voters know that Jane Campion's winning director. So they could spread the love. And Jane Campion has a screenplay Oscar. The fact that it happened at the BAFTAs makes me be predicting Coda. I'm putting two out of three Coda goose eggs at least in the coda basket you can, that's not what a goose egg is you can't put a goose egg in the yeah, basket you're right okay. you're not predicting a goose egg it's a regular egg chicken egg i wouldn't say this isn't close though i think power of the dog could definitely still win they yeah. can just be like no that that's the movie we like the best and for screenplay i'm also really interested in the fact that the betting websites have coda with an edge now they've all kind of flopped over the same websites that say that power of the dog has the edge for picture so that coda has the edge for screenplay for original screenplay we got thrown a massive curveball today so licorice pizza beating belfast at the bafta awards was like okay they like pta better than sir kenneth Branagh. and then the wga happened today and they go for freaking don't look up over licorice pizza belfast ain't there so this was like a freebie for Licorice Pizza, a freebie. And Licorice Pizza fumbled at the finish line, it fumbled. I don't think Don't Look Up's gonna win the Oscar for original screenplay, okay? I really don't think that. And it makes me think that maybe it's just gonna be Belfast. Licorice Pizza has a measly three nominations, Belfast has seven. Kenneth Branagh is also overdue like Paul Thomas Anderson, you, you know, maybe not quite as overdue, but he's an eight-time nominee now without a win. 
And I think Belfast just is going to be the more popular beloved movie. And I am going to be predicting it in screenplay. And I'm not alone in this. A lot of people changed their minds when they saw that Licorice Pizza lost. Also, Critics' Choice gave Belfast screenplay over Licorice Pizza, which is really weird. And the Golden Globe win is not too bad of a bet. I mean, Green Book didn't even win WGA that just won Golden Globe and it still took the Oscar. So it's a close race between, you know, two overdue directors. Yeah, this is a really interesting race. Cause now with Don't Look Up having the curveball at the WGA, I mean, you could even argue that that could win over Licorice Pizza and Belfast. Like if you don't see any of those panning out, I don't think so. What's more likely to win Best Picture, Belfast or Licorice Pizza? But it's not always that way. Like remember Get Out beating three billboards? Ah, I guess I'll go with Belfast and hop on the new bandwagon. Cause Licorice Pizza, I, I suppose is an more of an odd movie. Belfast's screenplay feels kind of normal and standard. And what's Coda? I think these choices are gonna make a lot of people like, what? How are you picking Coda over Power of the Dog? and Belfast over Licorice Pizza. Yeah, I kind but of feel that way too. I feel like there's a very, very small chance that worst person in the world could somehow take this category. I mean, it would be my vote, obviously, but I don't think it's gonna happen. Cinematography. The ASC just happened, live breaking fucking news. The ASC just gave it to Greg Frazier. I was thinking they could maybe go with Del Bonnell because they do love their black and white for sure. They give it to the white ribbon, but it makes sense for them to go with Dune here. And Greg Frazier is a big name and he's got the Batman and everything. So he's really like a hyped up guy right now. BAFTA, ASC, seems like a Batazunga going into the Oscars. Yeah, I mean, Dune is the bigger achievement, certainly if you want to look at cinematography that way. It has often gone to like a really big achievement movie. Power of the Dog would be quite a small cinematography winner. It'd be, you know, a little bit like giving editing to Sound of Metal. Power of the Dog is definitely, I would say it's the runner up. I would say it's the runner up and it did win the critics choice and it would be the first woman cinematographer to ever win. Yeah, I'll go with Dune, especially after the ASC. Yeah, ASC BAFTA combo. I, I gotta stick with Dune here. I gotta go with Dune. Editing is a wonky race this year, as we know. All the major people gave it different things. King Richard won the Eddie, No Time to Die won the BAFTA and West Side Story won the Critics' Choice. And only King Richard is nominated at the Oscars. And somehow none of those awards went to Doom, which seemed like the front runner. The editing category is a very close tie to the Best Sound category. Since The Departed, Best Editing has gone to a Best Sound nominee. And in the majority of cases, it has gone to a Best Sound winner. Dune is nominated for Best Sound, is winning Best Sound. King Richard's not even nominated. Power of the Dog's the only other overlapping movie with sound and editing. So that might make it your number two. That's Maybe. up to you, that's your preference. But I think Dune being such a lock to win sound, I would still maybe have to go with that one. Yeah, I'm gonna have to go with Dune here. I, I default to it. The Eddie is often kind of weird too. Like, I don't think the Eddie is the most predictive guild. I'm not really afraid to stray away from them. Gravity lost the Eddie award. I think it got Critics Choice, but it also lost BAFTA. And that's very similar. Gravity didn't have the most rapid cuts, but there was something like technical about the movie overall that people are appreciating. Also, Dune's editing is really good, so I can't really complain. But I guess either of those awards could go in different directions. Like those could be awards that Dune could lose. Another award that is Dune's to lose, but maybe it could lose, is production design. Although we haven't really been given strong indication that Nightmare Alley could upset, but I think that is the one that could. But Critics' Choice and BAFTA both went with Dune. Art Directors Guild went with Dune and Fantasy and Nightmare Alley and Period. So it definitely uh, establishes Nightmare Alley as a runner up. But we, we've seen upsets happen at the Oscars where Critics' Choice and BAFTAs didn't predict it. I definitely think it's in a category where we could see an upset, but it's like with Black Panther and Mad Max. Like it's just the kind of fantasy epic, I mean, maybe you want to call them sci-fi, whatever, that wins production design for the world building. And I think that's going to happen. And if Nightmare Alley was gonna win production design, I think it probably would have taken Critics' Choice where it has like 10 nominations. I'm actually weirdly gonna stick with Nightmare Alley for production design. Really? Because I feel like Dune's not gonna win every award that it's up against. The betting odds are actually kind of interesting. They're still not making Nightmare Alley that amazing of a bet. I mean, you might take that as a sign. Like, yeah, that's a legitimate movie that could upset. Best costumes? That's Corella. 
It's definitely going to be Cruella. I don't know what the runner-up is either. Seems pretty easy, and I don't think it matters that Cruella is not like a Best Picture nominee like some movies in this category. Best score. I think this is also going to be Dune. Dune's been winning everywhere. Johnny Greenwood has not won any of these major awards. He's just taken some critics groups, but Hans Zimmer's really ready for that second Oscar. He really is, and, I, and he's definitely coming for it. Yeah, I definitely think Dune's going to take score also. It has the most of it. It's insane. It's very loud. It's very everywhere. Best sound, also Dune. This one's really fucking easy, I think. Yeah, this is a no-brainer. If you're betting on anything else, just don't. Easy wheezy. If there were two sound categories, it'd be winning them both. Visual effects is also easily Dune. This is the easiest category of the night. There's not even a universe where this doesn't happen. It's just going to win. It already won. Makeup. I thought this would be like a fun, weird race because the Makeup Guild gave their award to Coming to America and they gave a couple awards to Corella, but they gave nothing to House of Gucci or Tammy Faye or Dune. And they have a pretty decent streak at this point of giving at least one of their awards to the Oscar winner. But I feel like that's just not going to happen this year. And then we have Tammy Faye taking BAFTA and Critics' Choice for Makeup. That's just it. Seals the deal, that's I think. That's it right there. Yeah, Tammy Faye, we've decided, you know, it's, that's the transformative makeup that they look for. She's caked in makeup the whole time. It really does transform her performance. I think it does enhance that performance as well. I do think her cheeks look too rock solid, but everything else about the makeup I think is pretty stellar. I don't really mind the win. And it's happening. And it's got that actress makeup combo, just like Monster and the Iron Lady. Best song? This one seems pretty easy. No Time to Die, Billie Eilish. Been kind of sweeping, kind of winning all the awards. Nothing's really challenged it. Really sorry that Disney didn't campaign. We need to talk about Bruno because that would have been winning, but they chose to do Dorso Regitas and that's not happening. Best international film, Drive My Car, one of the easiest to predict of the night. No contest. Best animated film, Encanto, I think will win. I don't really care that Mitchell's won Critics' Choice. That makes a lot of sense and I'm glad they did it to vary it a little bit, but Encanto won the BAFTA. Like, Encanto's been winning all these awards. It seems like it's just the heavy and clear front runner. Yeah, it has the Globe, it has the PGA. Mitchell's did win the Annie Award, and I think Encanto's just gonna take this one. It also has two other nominations. And then documentary is Summer of Soul. I don't think it's gonna be Flea at this point. I think Flea would have no. needed to win somewhere, and it hasn't. Summer of Soul is absolutely winning. It swept nearly every award, nearly every single award. And that's going to be a great win because I really love that film. Some years the short films are kind of challenging, but this year I feel like it's really easy to just bet on what looks to be out front and I have no real reason to go against it. An animated feature, Robin Robin, is a half hour Netflix short, very cute, has Richard E. Grant voice acting in it too, as well as BAFTA nominee Adil Akhtar. It's cute and it has animals and you can look at their past wins. That is what gets you a win in this category. For documentary short, I think this one is maybe most ripe for a surprise. But the Queen of Basketball seems out front. That's a New York Times documentary about a woman who was at one time possibly the best basketball player in the world. It's very fast paced, very easy to be sucked into. I think maybe the runner up is Audible, which I also watched. Very good documentary. But I just can't argue with people saying the Queen of Basketball is out front. And then in live action short, we have Riz Ahmed's short in which he actually gets to accept the award that's a big factor it also has a really obvious social message that it makes sure that you understand very similar in a way to two distant strangers it's not as bad as two distant strangers but it is almost as heavy-handed in a way that i i personally didn't love but they went with that movie and this one's better so they're gonna go with this i think it's if if you want to go against the grain looking at a category where dune loses is probably a good idea like one or two I just can't predict which one it is. Like, I do think that it's very possible Dune loses one or two awards. I just don't know which ones. Editing, cinematography, or production design, one of those. Yeah. I think both the screenplays are pretty up in the air. And then obviously I think picture is up in the air. So like, those are the categories you're really looking to win on. But other than that, a lot of the texts seem pretty locked up. The acting categories certainly do. Certainly with their nominations this year, there were like a lot of surprises. I do wonder if maybe the Oscars could go nuts in a couple categories. Like, I don't know. And remember, if you're thinking about making some bets this week on the Oscars, you gotta go to Odds Checker. And there's a link to Odds Checker conveniently in the description box under this video. And of course, make sure that you bet responsibly. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Will you dare to say Dune is losing a tech category?